I was raised in Cuddy, Pennsylvania. It's a small, small town outside of Pittsburgh. Whenever I was a year old, my daddy was like an uh, old man, very old. He, he broke his back in the mine, so he could never stand up straight. He was, all I knew of him had bent over and, and curvature of the spine. My sister became like my mother, my sister Anne, and she actually raised us. They were very, very poor. They uh, had like seven kids sleep in one bed. They had 19 ki children, and he was the baby. That's why his name became the babe. Yeah, I was an average student as far as grades were concerned. And I don't know whatever made me go out for wrestling. I don't know why, I, when I was in ninth grade. But I did go out and I made varsity. For four years I had Dr. William A. Harris as my coach and he was a great coach. Everything was by the numbers. Again and again and again and again, do it again and again. So we had to go running every Sunday. We'd meet at his house and we'd go for miles out in the country. The whole morning, whole, all Sunday from nine to about three, we'd be out there running around the country. We had a positive attitude, I think, towards wrestling and winning. I didn't go out to lose. <laughs> we went out to win, and the whole team was like that. Confidence, I guess I had confidence. I didn't think I was gonna lose. My dad has always been very confident in everything he's done. Um, teaching us, reading to us, being the best teacher, fifth grade teacher. He always did anything he said he was gonna do, he did. Babe was a role model. In 1945, in the, in the program, uh, there was not a state category for 88 pounders, so he just was a WPIAL champion then. But the next year, in, when he was a 95 pounder, he became a state champion, and he did it for three years. No one could hold him down and they couldn't get up from him. He was a tremendous rider. That's one of the things that uh, I don't know is not written about what a good rider he was. The, the write-ups about him are his famous move. Well, the Gazzoni is whenever you sit out and they put their arm around your arm and their arm is now over your arm and turn, you go on your side all the way down to one side and you just keep moving and you come underneath so you can back out and get on top. <laughs> and that's what, basically what it was. It just happened, I just, I just did it. And then the rest of the team learned it also. If my father wasn't such a success in wrestling, he never would have gone to college. No. He probably would have been, what, coal a, coal, a coal miner. And then I got my scholarship to Waynesburg University. They offered me four years free, three meals a day, and my room and board, so everything, you know, I didn't cost me a penny to go to college which is great back then. And I had four years there under Raymond Bucky Murdoch, who was the coach there, and he was also a great guy. So between the two of the coaches, I think I had two of the best coaches I could ever have. I guess I was lucky, <laughs> fortunate, at the right time, at the right place, I guess. Well, I think I lost once or twice in high school. That's about it. And in college, I didn't lose any. I remember I was wrestling boarders from Oklahoma. <laughs> he was tougher than hell. I, I beat him 7 6. That's kind of tight. A tough go all the way. The study was to take him down and get behind. <laughs> and then I could ride him forever. They couldn't get out once I got on top of them, or once I got, and they couldn't hold him once I got underneath. And just movement, 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 and turn, and twist, and turn, and movement. In other words, if you, if you didn't do the right thing at the right time, then you weren't going anywhere. You, you did the right thing at the right time. And I don't know how I ever learned that, but I just, I just automatically came to me. I was strong, but he was also strong. I just rustled as hard as I could, and I guess that's what made a difference. Because I wrestled when I was a freshman varsity, I couldn't compete when I was a senior. There's some kind of rule. I don't know what, it, well, I forget what it was. Back then they were drafting people after you got so old, 21 or 22. So I had to go to Fort Knox, Kentucky. That's where I did my basic training and with tanks. Then I went to Korea and I had with tanks over there also. 
Well, the confidence I got from wrestling is that if, you, if you're going to want to win, you got to, you know, do things. And that's the same way with be, being a tank gunner or a driver or whatever. You got to want to do it and you got to move and do it. It's scary. <laughs> of course, I used to stand on top of my tank and wave a flag <laughs> and I would upset the enemy. <laughs> I was wearing bronze star because of one or two times in our battle, we had to move our tanks beyond the front line and go into enemy territory and just shoot like hell. I couldn't see what I was doing, but I did it anyway. For our father to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, we are so, so proud of him and we are so humbled that they have actually looked into him and actually are honoring him to be in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame.